Alrighty, we're going to do muscle palpation of the scapular region, shoulder region, and moving down and toward the forearm. We're going to start out with the scapular muscles, and our first muscle is the trapezius. We're going to break trapezius up into three sections, upper trapezius, middle trapezius, and lower trapezius. To do upper trapezius, we're going to ask the patient to um, actually do neck extension. It'll be easiest to do this one in sitting, so we'll put that one off until we get to the sitting position. But we can go ahead and move on to the middle trapezius, and to find the middle trapezius, we're going to ask the patient to bring their arms out to the side and simply bring their um, shoulder blades together, squeezing back. And you can see middle trapezius at the spine of the scapula, and then go ahead and relax. To look for lower trapezius, we change the position of the arms to the what I call the Superman position, and now we'll palpate lower, below the spine of the scapula, and slightly medial, and ask the patient to lift their arms as if they're um, Superman, and we can find that muscle very easily on either side of the spine and just below the bottom of the scapula. One more time up, and there's our lower trapezius. From here we want to look at the rhomboids, and to find the rhomboids we need to turn off the trapezius. So we're going to ask the patient to put their arm in the small of their back. The rhomboids are connected onto the medial border of the scapula going toward the spine, so that's the area where we want to palpate. And then we'll ask the patient to lift their arm up off their back, and there are the rhomboids. If we don't uh, feel a good contraction, we can always add the resistance one more time and that will intensify the contraction of the rhomboids. Next on our list is pectoralis minor. So we'll ask our patient to change their position to the sitting position. And so now that she's sitting, we can go ahead and find upper trapezius. Upper trapezius can be palpated in two different ways. We can ask the patient to do slight neck flexion and then resist neck extension. Pull back and feel the large thick muscle here or the other way is to resist shoulder um, or scapular elevation. And go ahead and lift up for me and then we can find the trapezius upper portion all the way in this area. To find pectoralis minor, pectoralis minor is attaching to the coracoid so we'll want to find the coracoid process in the anterior part of the chest wall. The patient's going to put their arm in the small of their back, and so now we'll ask her to lift her arm up off the small of her back, and there we've got a strong contraction of pectoralis minor. Relax for me one more time, and now palpate. There we go. Pectoralis minor. Next muscle on our list is serratus anterior. And to find serratus anterior, we need to ask the patient to rest on their back. And this muscle will be found in between pectoralis major anteriorly and the latissimus posteriorly. So we need to feel in the lateral aspect of the chest wall. And what we'll ask the patient to do is to reach toward the ceiling doing scapular protraction. And then we want to palpate along the rib area in between those two larger muscles. Go ahead and pull up and relax. And we can feel the contraction on the edge of the ribs. Pull up again in the area between those two larger muscles. Next on our list are the deltoid muscles. And so uh, we'll ask the patient to sit up for us one more time. Deltoid has three part portions, the anterior deltoid and the middle deltoid. We can test both of those in the sitting position. Anterior deltoid does shoulder flexion. So we'll look for that muscle here coming down and attaching onto the deltoid tuberosity. And I'll ask her to raise her arm forward. And as she raises her arm forward, there is her anterior deltoid. Relax one more time. Pull up. L anterior deltoid right there. Middle deltoid is going to be on the lateral aspect of the arm and we'll ask the patient to move into abduction. So go ahead and bring your arm out to the side and there's her middle deltoid. Posterior deltoid is on the back side 
and this is sometimes an area where people can get tripped up, we need to find posture deltoid with a patient positioned in prone. It's best at horizontal abduction. And sometimes that can be an area where people forget and want to test it in sitting. So we need to position her back on her tummy. And in this position, she's going to have her arm in abduction and hanging over the edge. And then I'll ask her to raise her elbow up toward the ceiling. And there is her posterior delt doing horizontal abduction. One more time and then relax. Supraspinatus is the next muscle on our list, but we'll hold that one for just a second. And while we're in this position, we're set up to look at some of the other rotator cuff muscles. We can find her teres minor and her um, infraspinatus. We'll find those below the spine of the scapula. Here's the spine of the scapula. Move to the area just below the spine of the scapula. And the action for this muscle is going to be external rotation. So I'll ask her to raise her hand up toward the ceiling in this position. The initial position, though, is abduction at 90 degrees with the elbow flexed to 90 degrees over the edge of the table. Go ahead and produce this. Relax one more time, and you can see muscle contraction. Pull right there. That is combination of infraspinatus and teres minor. We cannot differentiate these muscles because they work the same. They're located closely in the same area, so for our purposes, we'll look at them together. While she's here, we can also look at the latissimus and the teres major. Teres major and latissimus work together, and they have same actions, but we'll find them um, by their attachments. So teres is going to be on the lateral or axillary border of the scapula just above the scapular spine. So we can double check and make sure that we're on that. There is the bottom of her scapula. Put her back into this position. And so now I'm just around the corner from the, the inferior angle. And this muscle is going to want to do extension and adduction. So the resistance is going to be asking the patient to pull down and in, and it's going to be attaching right onto this area. So I'm going to move in front of you just a bit here. Okay, and pull down and in, and there is her teres major. Relax. Now to find latissimus, I'm going to move further down and away from that inferior angle. It likes to do the same thing as teres. They're good friends. So here was the attachment for teres. I'm going to move down and away from that scapula, but the resistance to my patient is still the same. Go ahead and pull down and in for me. And there is her latissimus. And relax. One more time. Down and in. So I'm away from the edge of the scapula now. Same type of movement. Alrighty, so we're ready to change positions. Let's go ahead and set up. In the sitting position, we need to go back and pick up her supraspinatus. Supraspinatus is in the supraspinatus fossa. It's the one rotator cuff muscle that likes to do abduction instead of um, external rotation or internal rotation. And so we'll palpate in the supraspinatus fossa above the spine. There's the spine. And we'll ask the patient to do quick little movements of abduction. So go ahead and quick little ones. Actually, you can see her supraspinatus contracting right there. Perfect. Good. Alrighty. Now we're going to change positions to look at her pectoralis major. So I'll ask her to rest on her back. Alrighty. Clavicular um, pec major, because pec major has two portions. Clavicular pec major we're going to look at and I always think of the movie Dracula, that we're going to ask the patient to bring their arm up and across as if she was bringing a cape or something up and across her face. I'm going to palpate just below the clavicle area and then resist her as she brings her arm up and across. And then we can feel clavicular pec major. To find the sternal portion, we bring the arm up into flexion and now we'll ask her to bring her arm down and across toward the other hip. 
and I always think of the movie Braveheart that she's going to take her sword and put it back in the sheath as she brings her arm across. Palpation wise we're going to palpate right here at the edge of the axilla and bring the arm down and in and all of this muscle area here is her clavicular pec major. I'm sternal pec major. Okay next muscle on our group is the triceps, so we'll ask our patient to turn over. Triceps has three heads. I'm going to put you in your tummy. Triceps has three heads, and so the patient needs to be positioned with their arm um, supported and in 90 degrees of abduction. And what we'll look at first is the tendon, broad and flat, just above the olecranon. So we'll resist elbow extension. Go ahead and push out and there is the distal tendon. Now the three heads of the triceps are medial, lateral, and long. If I bring her arm back here into anatomical position, this is the medial side, this is the lateral side. So I'm gonna bring her back out here and resist elbow extension. There is the lateral head, and relax. Come down here distally, but on the medial side, and go ahead and push out, there is her medial head. And the lateral head is going to be coming up and attaching onto the inferior aspect of the glenoid. But the lateral head would be the long head. Lateral head's over here. The long head is going to be over here on this side. Go ahead and press out one more time. And so for palpation of that area, we would look for this here. So one more time, lateral, medial, and long. Okay, we'll have our patient sit back up. We want to look at muscles on the anterior aspect of the arm now. We're going to look at biceps first. And so with the biceps, we'll first look for the distal tendon attaching onto the radial tuberosity. Biceps likes to do elbow flexion, so go ahead and bring your arm up. And so here we can feel that large tendon. You can also see good muscle belly here and to find the long head remember that long head is going through the bicipital groove go ahead and let your elbow relax for a second so find the bicipital groove internally externally rotating and then go ahead and pull your hand up for me one more time and there we can feel the long head in the bicipital groove next muscle is brachialis brachialis sits just below biceps and so what we need to do is actually find the, the tendon, the distal tendon for biceps. Go ahead and pull up for me. There it is. And now I'm going to put my fingers on either side and turn biceps off. I turn biceps off by putting her into a position of pronation. And now go ahead and pull your arm up toward the ceiling. Now I'm on the brachialis. It's on either side of the biceps, but because we've put her into pronation, we're going to bias the movement more toward brachialis and less toward biceps. So we find brachialis by going on either side of the distal tendon for biceps. Next on our list is brachioradialis. Brachioradialis has its uh, origin up on the lateral supracondylar ridge. So we're going to find it between the muscle of brachialis on the front and triceps on the back going to be right here in this area. The patient should be positioned in mid position, so not in pronation, not in supination, but mid position. This is where this muscle functions best. And we'll ask her to resist elbow flexion again, so go ahead and pull up. So the attachment up here on the supracondylar ridge, we can trace the muscle belly, the largest part of the belly is here, and then the distal attachment on the radial styloid process right down here. And relax. Okay. Pronator teres is next on our list. Pronator teres is going to run from the medial epicondyle coming across over to the radius and we're going to want to pull her into pronation. So that's the area where we're going to pull or feel. We want to resist at the forearm and not at the hand because I don't want to be bringing in any of the wrist flexor muscles. And I'll ask her then to go ahead and bring her hand toward the pillow and relax one more time 
And there is pronator teres coming straight across. Last muscle on our list is supinator. Supinator wraps himself around the head of the radius. So to find him, we first want to find the head of the radius. So turn your patient into pronation supination until we're on the head. Once you're on the head of the radius, move just distal. Move just off the head of that radius. And now this muscle wants to supinate, so we want to resist supination. And again, try not to resist at the hand, resist at the forearm. Go ahead and bring your um, hand up toward the ceiling. And we can feel supinator just distal to that radial head on the outside. One more time. Pull. There it is. You can see the muscle contracting. Alrighty.